Hello everyone, welcome to Seeking Legends. I am your host, Cryptid Hunter. First of all, I would like to apologize for not being able to go out into the field and bring you an exploration video. Due to this pandemic, I haven't been able to go out, but hope that would be changing soon. For now, I hope you are enjoying these type of videos as there will be more of them coming your way. In the meantime, you will find a variety of strange and interesting stories ranging from the supernatural, unexplained, unsolved, urban legends, and everything else in between. If you enjoyed this video, please consider sharing it with your friends so others can also find us. If you would like to share your own personal experience with paranormal or something strange with the rest of us, please visit my website at SeekingLegends.com and shoot me an email. Maybe your story can be featured on the show. You can always remain anonymous. Thanks for your understanding, and let's get on with the story. Since the beginning of time, the world has been a place full of unexplained phenomena shrouded in the shadows of time. There will always be things that we will never be able to explain, and many times, truth is stranger than fiction. Mexico is a place full of legend and mystery. Its people are humble, hardworking, and determined to survive no matter the conditions. And who out there can deny that the food will leave your mouth watering? You can almost certainly smell and taste those delicious flavors and aromas just by looking at it through your computer screen. The land is vast and beautiful, but just like any other place on earth, some areas of Mexico also have a very dark and twisted turn. For example, deep in the beautiful forest of Veracruz, one can easily come across an entire village where real witches and sorcerers live and openly practice some of the darkest rituals you will find on earth. There, you can find something as simple as a body cleansing to invocations of strange entities and demonic spirits of which you can make deals with in exchange for your soul. If you head on out to Guanajuato, you will find some of the most strangest and most bizarre mummified bodies you will ever see inside the Museum of Mummies, easily rivaling those found in Egypt. Sometimes between 1829 and 1871, there was a cholera pandemic that struck in many parts of Mexico. Many of the people who fell ill and passed away because of it were immediately buried in order to control the spread of the disease. In the haste to bury them, it is strongly believed that many people who were thought to be dead or will almost certainly die from cholera were buried alive, resulting in the corpse having a horrific facial expression. Many of the bodies were eventually disinterred sometime between the 1870s and 1958. During that time, a law required families to pay a burial tax to ensure perpetual burial of a loved one. If the tax was not paid, the body was then removed from his resting place. Being that many of the bodies were almost perfectly well preserved, they were then stored in a local building nearby the city. Eventually, Curious seekers began to pay the caretaker under the table to see those bodies. Word spread quickly about the well-preserved and grotesque looks in the mummies' faces that soon after the city turned this into a local museum where you can now go explore through the exhibits of someone's almost perfectly preserved loved one. Heading over to the deserts of Durango, you will find one of the world's strangest places known as the Zone of Silence. 
Much like the Bermuda Triangle here in the U.S., many people and things often vanish into thin air. In this area, strange magnetic anomalies cause radio frequencies to fail and magnetic compasses needles spin aimlessly. As if this wasn't enough, many brave souls who have taken on the challenge of exploring this place on their own are often never seen again. Xochimilco is one of Mexico's most colorful and happiest destinations for tourists to explore. There, the colorful gondola-like boats can be rented and taken for a cruise traveling around a vast waterway transport system that was actually built by the Aztecs. All the while food vendors, artisans, and even mariachi bands float past you creating a party-friendly like atmosphere. While traveling these ancient waterways, you will run into one of the world's most eeriest and haunted destinations called La Isla de las Muñecas, translated to English to The Island of the Dolls. There you will find hundreds of deteriorating dolls of various styles and colors hanging from trees, hiding behind bushes, and possibly even creeping up behind you. This island has a sad and strange legend attached to it. It all began with a man named Don Julian Santana Barrera who inhabited the island alone for over 20 years. Story tells that one day while Don Julian was prowling through the small island looking for items to salvage, he came across a small doll-like figure that was stuck in some branches near the water. Thinking he can possibly clean and resell the doll next time he went into town, Don Julian quickly ran up to the doll and grabbed it. But to his surprise, the doll was no doll at all. What he thought was a doll stuck in branches was actually the drowned body of a small girl who was caught up in the waterway and not knowing how to swim, she ended up drowning. Of course, being terrified of this discovery, he quickly tried to render help but it was much too late. The girl had been dead for some time and there was no way of reviving her. Julian with the body went into town where the family reclaimed it and the young girl was buried. Not long after that, some very odd things began to happen on that small island. What was once a restful and secluded place for Don Julian quickly became an unrestful location. Nights became nightmarish and the presence of a little girl could be felt wandering outside his shed. Cries and screams for help will often be heard near the river where the body was found. Thinking he was going insane, he decided to go back to the area where he had found her and tried to make peace with her in order to appease the spirit. When he reached the area, what he saw made him drop to his knees. In the exact same spot where he had found the body of the girl laid a doll sitting on top of a lily pad. Being a believer in the supernatural, Don Julian took this as a sign and a thought occurred to him. As a way to hopefully appease the spirit and protect himself at the same time, he decided to bring her gifts, and those gifts would be dolls. Every day when he would go into town to work, he would pick up any discarded dolls he could find and bring them back to the island. It soon became an obsession and he would constantly be seen searching for them in trash bins, behind bushes, in abandoned homes and anywhere else he can think of finding them. Little by little and in a chilling way the island began to be filled with hundreds of deteriorated, sunburned, odd looking dolls. Some of them were missing limbs. Others were headless, some even seemed to stare straight through your soul, and others have been found in local cemeteries where voodoo rituals were done to them. It didn't matter to Don Julian. All that mattered was that he would collect these dolls for the spirits. Not long after, he began to lose his mind and would tell locals that a small girl would follow him wherever he went demanding he brought her back a doll or face the consequences. 
His nephew also mentioned that his uncle would oftentimes speak of a river mermaid that would visit him and threaten to take his soul with her if he ever failed to bring home a doll. One day, while fishing with his uncle as they often did, Don Julian ordered his nephew to go tend the herd that was nearby. When his nephew came back, he was met with a tragic scene. He found his uncle face down in the water near their small boat. He had died of an apparent heart attack near the area where he had originally found the girl. Some say that he had failed to bring a doll back with him that day, and keeping her promise, the river maid drowned him and took his soul with her. Now Don Julian and the little girl are destined to wander the haunted island for all eternity. In modern day, people who frequent the island are still encouraged to bring her a gift. Hundreds, if not thousands of dolls have been collected along the years. Some people get more than they bargain for and end up running away screaming for their lives when they see the dolls move their heads following them as they walk past, see the doll's eyes open, or raise their arm as if to warn them not to be there. Others report hearing the voices of a small girl asking for a toy and see a man who may introduce himself as Don Julian himself guarding the place or walking aimlessly searching for new dolls. Locals claim that the dolls themselves are the guardians of this location, and when someone tries to steal one of them for their own pleasure, they end up mailing them back claiming that they had bad luck or that the doll wouldn't let them sleep at night. Screams, cries, wailing, and dolls sneaking up on people have been reported by those who disrespect the area. Others claim that every year on the anniversary of Don Julian's death, you can see and hear all of the dolls come to life. Moles will not dare step foot there on that night and fear that they too will end up dead and become a wandering spirit and a never-ending curse stuck in this earthly realm. If you or anyone you know has had any type of experience with moving dolls, I would love to read them and possibly put them on my website. If you would like to check out my webpage, it is under SeekingLegends.com. There you will find links to all my social media where you can also follow me or shoot me an email with your own personal paranormal or strange experience. Until next time, I am Cryptid Hunter. Stay strange.